Hello underachievers! So, before we get into the video, I just need to promote some stuff, blah 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 blah. I'm going on tour in America again, there's also a date in Toronto for the Canadians. Here are the dates, uh, tickets are really cheap, I'm coming out with Bears and Trees, Action Adventure. Yes, there will be VIP tickets, yes, there will be gay people there, yes, it will be fun as hell. I promise you, I, I have the best time every single night I'm on the stage. It's just it's just a load of fun, I, I'd be really excited to see you guys' faces just yelling at me. Also, if you weren't aware, I now have a Patreon, the link to that is in the description below. There's a bunch of stuff on my Patreon, like early access to covers, behind the scenes stuff for music videos, like demos of songs that I've released, it's all really fun, so check that out. And finally, I also have a Discord, and if you are going to come to any of my shows and you have no one to go with, there is a chat for every single show of tour, you can make friends, you can meet your best friend, uh, no offense gig. So, today's video is about my tiny little I'm joking. Today is about bottom growth. That is what we're talking about. And for those of you that aren't quite sure what bottom growth is, pretty much bottom growth is just what happens when you take testosterone and, you know, you get a little bit of growth down there in your bits. I'm gonna say the anatomically correct term once during this video. I'm gonna say it right now for those of you that need to be more specific. It is where your clitoris grows when you start testosterone. If you wanna know what bottom growth looks like, that, that is not my job. I'm, I'm not here to share that information, but you can just Google FTM bottom growth, go on Reddit, go on Google images. There'll be, there'll be stuff all over the place. But yeah, it's something that happens to every single person, uh, whether that be a trans guy or a non-binary person assigned female at birth. It happens to every single person that goes on testosterone to start a medical transition. And the conversation surrounding bottom growth has changed so much since I started learning about it, since I started researching before I started testosterone. The conversation around it has been negative and positive. It's changed a lot. I'll talk about that a bit later, but you guys had a lot of questions. I actually made a video about bottom growth a good few years ago, but I still get questions every single day. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna compile them and put them in a video again. So the first question is, does it actually relieve bottom dysphoria? I'm scared it will just make me more aware of no PP. This Obviously, a lot of my answers are gonna start like this during this entire video. It depends entirely on the person. If I'm talking about my personal experience, it actually did help a lot with my bottom dysphoria because I had, obviously, and I still do, have bottom dysphoria about the fact that I don't have, you know, that little guy. Not little guy. If I had one, it would be huge. I had a lot of bottom dysphoria stemming from the fact that I did not have a willy. And you know what? When I started testosterone, I was kind of just excited to get bottom growth, if I'm going to be completely honest. Pretty much how I look at it is that it distinguishes my genitals from those that are typical of, you know, females. Like when I look down there, it looks different than it used to look. I don't look at that and think, oh, a lady in the way that I used to because it just doesn't look the typical way it would usually for somebody born female. To be honest, it kind of just looks like a little dink. So that helps me. <laughs> that makes me feel better about myself. But I understand the thought process of that. I think I maybe had a bit of a worry about that. But me personally, I do not get any more bottom dysphoria than I used to have. Like my bottom dysphoria has gotten better since starting testosterone and since having bottom growth. Could you have sex with it? I assume I assume you mean, could you penetrate somebody with it? And again, it, it entirely depends on the person and how much growth they have and what their anatomy is, you know, how it's structured. I would say for the majority of people that experience bottom growth, you can't really penetrate people in the same way that a natural born dink would be able to do that. It grows a few centimeters. It's not usually big enough to actually, you know, do the deed and have the same experience. Although I have heard of a few trans guys that are able to penetrate people with their natural anatomy. Um, so good for them. Uh, but what I would say is that don't don't start testosterone with any expectations that it will grow big enough for you to be able to do that. It's kind of just like a few centimeters bigger and wider and just fatter. <laughs> than it would be before. Does it hurt? I feel like in my last video, I, I may have over exaggerated how much it hurt. I can't quite remember the specifics of what I said. I do remember it hurting a decent amount when I first started testosterone. Not sure how dramatic I was really being. But like, yeah, it does come with some sensitivity, some pain. I mean, when you grow, you get growing pains. When the most sensitive part of anybody's body ever grows, it's gonna be a little sensitive and you know, it grows at a, a, at a very quick rate. Like it was, it was honestly the first change that I noticed when I started testosterone. There was the whole like, ah, my p smells different. It smells more strong. Ah, I'm sweaty. Ah, I'm hornier. Bottom growth, literally the next day started tingling down there. So I think it makes sense that it hurts. And you know, a few people have problems with the amount of sensitivity, but it's not like excruciating pain. It's, it's more of just an annoyance and discomfort and it does not last forever. And I kind of think the pain's worth it because it means that your dink grew bigger. <laughs> Where does it grow from? It grows from your natural anatomy. And when I say grow from, I don't mean that you grow a completely new organ. What happens is just that the anatomy that you have 
gets bigger. It extends more from your body, but you you don't you don't you don't like grow a whole new dink. It's just the dink that you had swells. Not like it's swollen, it just it just gets bigger. Somebody said, can someone have slow voice change but fast bottom growth and the other way around? Yes! Absolutely. Um, the changes that you get on testosterone depend entirely on the person, depend entirely on genetics. Like, I, I experienced bottom growth straight away. My voice dropped at, like, a, a decent rate, but there are other people that didn't get bottom growth until a bit later. There are other people that didn't get their voice breaks until a bit later, and that's completely normal. There is really no way to guess specifically how quick you're gonna get those changes. You just have to sit and wait for it. Does it grow hair? It does not grow hair the same way that a tip of a penis doesn't grow hair. It's, it's, it's pretty much just the tip of a penis just smaller and it just grows. That's kind of what the anatomy is anyway. I mean, when you're in the womb, you will start out as female, you have the same anatomy and then hormones change in the womb and then, you know, uh, you start growing a thing. It doesn't grow hair. No, no hair growth. Uh, I mean, when you start testosterone, you get hairier, but just not in that specific area. Does it look like a real but shorter slash smaller? Depends on how you interpret a picture of bottom growth. I would say yes. It looks like an uncircumcised to me. That 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 is what it looks like to me. That's what I look down. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it looks. It doesn't protrude out of your body as much as a dick would. You can get a surgery called a release done, where you know you cut the piece of skin that's keeping it tight to your body, and then it will release and I guess protrude a little bit more. But yeah, I'd say essentially it does. I don't think it looks much like it looked like before. And obviously you don't grow balls. But yeah. I guess I, I would encourage you to just Google image it if, if you're considering going on testosterone just so you know what you're expecting. Somebody said, can you see it from your POV? I assume this means when you look down, can you see it? And yes, obviously depending on how much growth you have, everybody's different. I need to stop saying that. But when I look down, uh, yes, I can see it. I couldn't see it before and now I can see it. I heard people get problems riding horses after slash during bottom growth. How sensitive does it get? Yes, I've heard of this too. I, I can completely understand if I was riding a horse and I just started getting bottom growth. I can imagine that would be sensitive. How sensitive does it get? Again, depends on the person. Mine got really sensitive, like very sensitive. And it was only for a few weeks where it was like uncomfortably sensitive. And there are ways you can work around it. You can try out different underwear. You can try out different clothes. There are plenty of things you can do. You can take painkillers if it's painful, but honestly, See, I would say it's more just uncomfortable than it is painful. There are ways to work around any of those issues that you have with it when it initially starts growing. I've heard when you get aroused, it feels like a boner. Is that true? Yes, that is what it feels like. Uh, absolutely. And I did not get that feeling before starting testosterone. And you know what? That's another thing for dysphoria where it really helped me out because I'm like, look, I don't have the anatomy that I want, but it does feel closer. Uh, to what I want. But yeah, there was plenty of waking up with that when I first started testosterone. And it's very noticeable, like you can feel it yourself. You can also see it more because it gets bigger. It, it works the same as a dick would in that regard. Like it fills up with blood, That that's how it works. But yeah, there's erectile tissue in there, so you, you, you do get boners. Do you get like a very random, sharp, annoying feeling that lasts a few seconds? Because I do. Absolutely, I got that quite a lot <laughs> when I first started testosterone. It's growing quite quickly, and you know, it's normal to have little things like this when you start testosterone. Even with your voice, like your voice will be a little bit painful for a bit because you've just taken a hell of a lot of testosterone and your body is like, oh God, now I've got to change. Like, it's all good. It's all normal. It's really nothing to worry about either. Like, it's uncomfortable and I have sensory issues. So maybe I, maybe that's why I felt it was more uncomfortable than other people have experienced. But it really, it's like, it's not, it's really not bad. It's, it's fine. Does it have to be treated differently in sex scenarios than pre-T? Again, depends on the person. Some people don't get much growth, but other times, you know, if it's big enough, you can suck it like a d Like, you can absolutely do that. And it feels great. But again, you can just use it the same way that you did before. It's just bigger. So you may need to figure out different angles. You just gotta figure out what feels good and that may take a while, especially as it's growing, but you're not gonna lose sensation at all. Uh, if that's something you're worrying about, you're not gonna lose the ability to finish yourself off if that's what you're worried about. Somebody says, have you experienced frequent UTIs from bottom growth? This is something that I haven't experienced. I've maybe heard a few people have experienced this. I'm not sure why that happens or if it's because of bottom growth or just testosterone itself and the changes in your pH maybe. I've not had issues with UTIs. I guess because it's bigger, maybe more stuff can get trapped on it and it's not as clean. Um, you just gotta make sure you're clean. Just 
just take care of what's going on down there. Do you ever get used to how it feels when it gets hard randomly, especially in public? So yeah, this is this is something that happens. It just randomly happens. And yeah, you get used to it. I mean, I've, I've been on testosterone for like over four years, over four and a half years. I'm coming up on five years this year. But I don't feel like there's this weird change that has happened that I haven't got used to. My body is just, I'm just used to my body being like this. I don't really remember what it looked like before. It's not really like I was looking at it much anyway. I don't really remember what it felt like before. So this is, it's just normal, really. Um, yeah. Was it worth it? Yes! Absolutely. Starting testosterone, absolutely. If you're just asking about bottom growth, was it worth starting testosterone and getting bottom growth? 100%. Like, there is, there is nothing I dislike about having bottom growth. I prefer it to what I had before. It's not ideal, but I, I like it a lot more. And as I was saying earlier, you can suck it like it. So, the level of dysphoria that I would have had if you couldn't do that, I'm sure will be much higher. It's increased my self-confidence. It's also helped out my sex life. It's, yeah, I, it was absolutely worth it. Does it grow on every person? I have never met a person who has not got bottom growth. Maybe there are a few people that didn't get bottom growth on testosterone. And I know there are a few people that like want to not get bottom growth and they're trying to figure out like DHT blockers. Don't take that from me, do your own research. But I think, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody gets bottom growth when they start testosterone. Does it get sensitive against underwear? 100%, uh, and I think that was the most uncomfortable thing about starting testosterone and getting bottom growth. Again, sensory issues. So I already had specific underwear that I liked wearing that, you know, didn't give me wedgies, didn't ride up in awkward positions, was the right material. I had to um, experiment, but yeah, it does get sensitive in underwear. So, you know, if, if you're getting uncomfortable, try a few different types of underwear. Try bigger boxes, try looser boxes, try tighter boxes, try the ones that aren't boxes, briefs. Just try whatever, you know, suits your own body. Um, that may be a thing to consider when starting testosterone. Saving a little bit of money to try out new underwear. Somebody asked, can you pee from it slash pee standing up? No. You cannot, as I said earlier, it's just the anatomy that you had that just got a bit bigger. Your urethra will be underneath the bottom growth. It doesn't, it doesn't magically like grow into the bottom growth, so you can't pee standing up from it. There is a type of bottom surgery though called metoidioplasty. Pretty much they use your bottom growth that you have and then they thread your urethra through the bottom growth so you can stand to pee, but no. Uh, just just bottom growth on its own? No, you can't stand to pee. Does it have to be a specific size for bottom surgery? Phalloplasty? No. For metoidioplasty, I've never heard of somebody being too small for it. Obviously, it may be more complicated to thread your urethra through it if it's very small, but I, I've never heard of anybody being too small for it. Somebody asked, does it still grow after two years? I would say most of the time, no. Maybe there'll be a bit of gradual growth, and I think I think I have experienced a tiny bit of gradual growth, but my testosterone levels have been up and down and up and down, and I've changed testosterone types, and I've been on hormone blockers, and since I've been on hormone blockers, I think it's grown maybe a little bit. I guess that's not the usual case where you just start testosterone and get the right level and then you have consistent levels. I did not have that experience. I would say most of the growing is done by two years, but th that doesn't mean that it's completely off the table that it will grow again. Does it feel different sitting down? Yeah, it does a little bit. I mean, I guess you kind of just get used to it. So it doesn't feel different now, but I remember in the beginning that it did feel different. Is it very noticeable? It depends what you mean by very noticeable. In terms of like looking down and seeing it myself, Yes, it's very noticeable for me because it does jut out a little bit, but in terms of like from a distance, is it very noticeable? Probably not as noticeable. Um, does it give you a giant bulge in your pants that is noticeable when you're wearing jeans? No, most likely not, unless you had freak growth and you now have like a five inch dong. But yeah, I would say it's noticeable enough for me to see a difference without looking too hard. How do you make your partner feel good in bed if they are experiencing bottom growth? In terms of sensitivity, you just gotta communicate. You just gotta ask them to let you know like how sensitive it's feeling, what specific motion is feeling sensitive, where it's feeling sensitive. Just start off slower, don't go like ham on it. But as I said for the like sixth time, you can suck it like a and it feels really good. Someone says, does it affect your horniness? Difficult question to answer. Testosterone definitely affects your horniness. Like it makes your libido go up a lot more than it was beforehand. I wouldn't say that bottom growth itself makes you more horny, but you know, as you spoke about earlier, you, you do just get boners. And for me, feeling that, you know, beforehand, I could just, if I was feeling a little bit horny, I could kind of ignore it. When you get in a boner, it's a little bit more difficult to ignore. I am just more horny in general, I would say. Does it hurt to get kicked in the crutch? Luckily enough, I have never been kicked in the crotch since having bottom growth. I can imagine it's excruciating though. And I know the whole ball thing where you get kicked in the balls 
and it like travels up and you feel it in your stomach and it's like a whole body experience. I understand that. In terms of bottom growth, that is the most sensitive part of anybody's body. That is more sensitive than a <laughs> that's more sensitive than balls. That would be horrifying to get kicked very hard in and it's a bigger target now, so I can imagine that sucks. Somebody says, have you experienced dryness or issues with that slash need to use estrogen to fix issues? So, this can happen when you start testosterone. Uh, when your estrogen levels get a little lower, uh, you will be less lubricated, shall we say, up there. You can experience dryness, which means that when you're doing the D, skin is thinner, you know, you can tear stuff down there. And what a lot of trans masks will do is you can get topical estrogen cream. So you can put that up there, makes things a lot easier. I have not experienced that at all. I'm very lucky. I've had no issues whatsoever down there. But it is something that happens to some people and it's very important to keep on top of. Like, I got a pelvic scan a few months ago and they were like, yeah, Everything's absolutely perfect, but that's not the case for everybody. So just 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 be careful. Does it impact scissoring? I have never done that. I would be very surprised if it didn't because it grows a lot, so it probably makes it easier. And this last one, somebody says, I've seen it get so much unnecessary hate online recently. How do you feel about it? I feel really weird about it, to be honest. When I first started testosterone, the overwhelming majority of people that I saw talking about bottom growth were excited for it, they were happy about it happening, and they liked it a lot more than what they had before, and that's how I feel about myself. Nowadays, on like TikTok specifically, I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, I don't wanna get bottom growth, that seems weird, I'm scared for it, uh, how do I stop getting bottom growth, like what can I do to stop myself getting bottom growth? I don't quite understand that at all, and like obviously I, I should not tell somebody how to feel about their own body, but yeah, it feels weird that a lot of people are, you know, being a bit gross about it, saying that it's gross, saying that it's icky, saying that it's weird. It's really not weird at all, and I understand the concern and the fear about it being weird. It's not weird. It's really not weird. Your bits just get a bit bigger. But yeah, I don't know if it does anybody any good talking about how gross something is that, you know, that's just somebody's body parts. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. If you have any other questions about it, let me know in the comments. But yeah, have a good day or don't. See you later, losers. Goodbye.